peace forever and always. Assalamu alaikum. Habaragani. Shalom. This is your brother, Talib. Want to talk with us this morning? Got to make it quick. Always got to say that because you know once our conversation really gets to going good, the video ends. So let me go ahead and get into this. So perhaps we have a little something to talk about later on this day. Angel Snub Nup 7. That's the name given to this channel. This is the reality's temple on earth. Fledgling organization dedicated first to the, to the upliftment of the descendants of slaves here in America, but humanity in general because we have lost our reality and we now take fiction and fantasy as reality. But that's not the subject of what I want to present on this video uh, this uh, morning. Now, again, Angel Snuff Nuff 7. Angel was my pet when I was a child. She was a witch, German Shepherd, and Chinese child. Wonderful uh, pet. She was my best friend, and the snub nut was my, like, pet name from my pet, which was snub nut. Seven is my favorite number. So I, I put it all together, angel snub nut seven. Now the subject of this video is pets. And a pet is a Wonderful, because as a child, that pet basically was my only real friend. If nobody else was there for me, Angel was there. Angel could not communicate with me like another human being, but I knew that she was on my side, and no matter what happened, she was my sincere, trustworthy, and wonderful friend. And unfortunately, due to the fact that my family began to move back and forth and some places did not take pets and would not allow you to have uh, animals, then she disappeared. And I don't know what happened to my pet. So, but as long as I live, I will always have a place in my heart for my pet. So I know how you feel about your pet. But then again, let me tell you something. I was a child. I was a child. And I was brought into a world where we have pets. But now I'm an adult. Not only am I an adult physically, but as your body begins to grow physically, then your mind should also bring about some type of maturity. And then you, with, with this new mature mind, those things that you did as a child, you begin to look at them in a different way. What we have done when we take a pet is that we deny an animal their right to be free. For our own selfish means, that's what you have done. And then you take this animal, this pet, and you mold it into, into something that it is not. You put sweaters on it. You put shoes on it. You put pants on it. Then you make this animal dependent upon you. It can't eat until you try to eat. 
It can't do nothing unless you're there to control what it does. You've taken its life. You've given it a life of incarceration. That's what you've done. Then, when you look at the overall view of this, you also deny your own humanity because you spend, we spend what millions and millions of dollars on pets. Vet bills for pets. And you got human beings that can't afford health care. You got human beings that can't afford a sweater. You got human beings that don't eat. But you spend millions of dollars on pet food, millions of dollars on pet care for animals that should be free doing something for themselves. How would you feel if somebody took you, caused you to go outside of what you and who you really are, put a leash on you, take you for a walk, catch you on your head? You don't see nothing humiliating to do that to your dog. You don't see nothing humiliating about petting your cat or your snake or your mouse. You have denied them another life form, the right to be independent, the right to do what uh, some might say God created the animal to do. You, because you're selfish, and you want this thing about control of another life. Don't this remind you of something? Black people, black people who are descendants of slaves, didn't they take us, our ancestors, and take you and sell you on the block, grab you by your lips like you do a dog today. Look at his teeth. He pecked it. How you doing, boy? And rub your head like you do your dog. You go to the zoo and you watch the great king of beasts, the lion behind a fence. Now, this is a short video and I can't really, really ride into it the way I want to. But while it's on my mind, I saw them rescue some dogs. The dogs were kept by a bad master. And they were kept in squalor, laying around in their own feces in cages. So the good people went to rescue the dogs from the bad people. They uh, took the dogs, cleaned them up, gave them fresh food and water and all like that. But when it was all said and done, they took them from a dirty cage just to put them in a clean cage. Yes, the cage is, the hygiene is different, but when it's all said and done, the dog went from a cage to another cage. He went from uh, fit incarceration to clean incarceration. When it's all said and done, that dog, that animal, is confined. How would you feel being locked up like that? Walked, somebody putting a, a rope around your neck, walking you in, down the street. You have no say so. You can't explore new worlds. You can't explore nothing without your massa being there. You're the owner. But you don't want to be on yourself. So when, so why do you get upset when other human beings want to own other human beings when you have this system of pettiness, owning pets, denying another life form their freedom? I just wanted to bring that up to our attention. That bird that can't fly. That snake that can't smell because it's locked up behind glass and metal. Let's think about it. Bring your opinion. Talk to me. Let your pet go. Let's not continue this.
the name of my ancestors, more so now than ever. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talit Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Welcome to all my viewers and subscribers and associates and hopefully I am your brother and friend. Surely it is an honor that you will spend 10 minutes of your most valuable time with me. I've, I've made videos, I think maybe perhaps two, on this particular subject and I'm going to further uh, I'm going to further do an addition you know something whenever we like doing something and we know that it is wrong we know in our hearts that it is wrong but we always want to try to find some way to justify it because we also like doing wrong. You should not drink alcohol, liquor, and get drunk out of your mind. But of course, if you listen to the average person who gets drunk and goes out of their mind, they have some kind of excuse why I do this. Even the murderer, if you talk with the murderer, he'll give you some kind of excuse why he had to kill. This is the reason why I smoked. This is the reason why I had to slap that hag in the damn face, because she was really tripping. No matter what it is we do of wrong, we always got to justify it. I know it's wrong, but I got to find some kind of, you know, yeah, brother, you're right. But see, it's like this. We cannot accept real truth. And then, but at the same time, we talk about that's what we want. We want truth. We want peace. We want love. If you don't, if you can't accept truth, if you can't accept peace, if you don't want love, all these things coincide with one another. With one another. Without one, you can't have the other. So as long as you reject the truth, as long as you try to justify doing your wrong, why do you continue to complain about the world? You part of the problem instead of the solution. I've spoken about us to, dis to discontinue on impact. We should not have pets. We should stop incarcerating and imprisoning pets. I just had a conversation with a relative. And we was talking about the dog. And you know how, you, how it is when you get a dog and you leave that dog locked up in your house and the dog whines. And then we, we come up and those who make money and exploit you by selling you pet products so you can take care of that dog, they come up with a term called pet anxiety. And the pet is hollering and crying because it misses you so much, which could be true. But if you notice, the only animal, the only pet that really has this so-called pet anxiety is the ones that live in the house. If you leave a dog outside where he belongs, black people, instead of living in your house, you got that from Caucasian people because the Caucasian people used to let the dog live in the cave with them. So now you copy what white folks do. You got this dirty, nasty-ass animal shedding animal hair and dandruff in your house. How sick we are. Now, the animal, when you leave, he starts crying and whining. And you want to think that's because the dog missed you. 
The dog is not crying and whining because for so much that he misses you or she misses you. It's because the dog is in prison. The dog is incarcerated. It wants to leave the house. It wants to go and be free. You said, brother, how do you know that the dog is uh, not crying for the master? You know, having some kind of anxiety. I know because I was incarcerated, I act the same damn way. That's why I can relate to animals locked up in a zoo, locked up in your house. I can, I, I can, I can uh, relate to your dog when you walk him down the street because when you're in prison, when you're incarcerated, you're treated the same way as an animal in the zoo, like a house pet, the same way. I'll be with that same attitude, locked up, having my anxiety. I wonder what my relative's doing, crying, because I want to be free. If you, if you let that dog stay outside instead of your house like he's supposed to be, he'll look at you when you leave, but now he got a certain amount of freedom instead of locked up in your damn house. Outdoor dogs don't act like that. But you got this dog incarcerated. If the dog was outside, he'll look at you when you leave. And then, being free, at least out in the yard, he got birds he can watch. He got traffic going up and down the highway. He got the next door neighbor washing clothes. Children playing in the street. He got a whole lot of other things on his mind. Besides, I'm incarcerated behind this damn fence. So the outdoor dog will look at you for a few minutes and then go on by his business chasing squirrels and doing whatever he can in the yard and other things that's going on in the environment. But when you are incarcerated, you lock that dog up in the house. His only friend is a couch and a TV that's not on. He's incarcerated in incarceration. Then he whines because he wants to be free. But see, you know it, but you don't want to accept that. Oh, he missed me. Little Rover missed me. Little Rover wants some kind of freedom that you deny the pet. That's why I tell us, leave those animals wherever they at. All the money we spend on pets, and we're supposed to be in some type of economic crisis. We spend billions of dollars on dog food, unnatural food. Dogs are carnivores, and you feed them corn and rice. Unnatural food for dogs. And that's why these dogs express unnatural behaviors, and they have unnatural sicknesses, arthritis and heart, high blood pressure, and cancer just like you and me because we also live unnatural lives and we also are incarcerated in our mind. We have a little freedom but we're incarcerated. We incarcerate our minds because we cage our minds within the confines of certain thought patterns. You are incarcerated when I'm a Republican. So that means your mind only stays within the boundaries of whatever whatever Republican is supposed to be. I'm a Christian. So that means your mind is incarcerated or imprisoned by the confines of that thought process. Then you turn around and you imprison other life. Because you incarcerate it. You incarcerate the elephant. You incarcerate and imprison the lions and the zebras and the gazelles and the lynx and the cheetahs. This is an unnatural life. How do we know what freedom is? The land of the free, home of the brave. How do you know, American, when you never have experienced? You've been incarcerated ever since the birth of this nation. And then you turn around and you have incarcerated not only animals, 
but you have incarcerated whole people and you have destroyed whole people. So of course, for the conqueror, those who have who have incarcerated human beings, of course, I don't see no mercy or no shock that they would imprison the dog or the sheep. But let us not be like them. Let us be different. So when your animal that you love passes, don't get no more animals and imprison them. And don't teach that to nobody. Leave these animals where they belong. You don't like being in a prison. Don't imprison no other life. Jot down your comments. This is your brother trying to run out. This was and is. <laughs> the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. I am the Angel Snuffin' Up 7 here on YouTube. And welcome once again to another very exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talit Ibn Roth. What brings me to this subject is that I made a comment on a video and someone was talking about owning a pit bull dog. Chances are that person that owns the pit bull dog is a black man. All through the black community that I see here where I, I live or reside, you can go up and down these streets and you see pit bull dogs and puppies. I suggest to him, and many of you already know my position on pet ownership, that we as black people, we should stop owning pets. And the reason why we should stop owning pets because out of all the human beings on the planet, the black man and woman of America should be able to relate with pet ownership from the other side, from the side of the dog or the cat or the bird or whatever animal you have enslaved because that is exactly what pet ownership is. It is slavery. Some of y'all said, well, pets get treated better than some people. All slaves in the United States did not get beat. They did not get whipped. But when it was all said and done, they were saved. And we scream and we holler today as black people that slavery was evil. We say that slavery was bad. Why? Because it was another human being. Another man said we were not human. So that gave him the right to make a pet out of us. And then once we get free, we turn right around and copy the oppressor by taking another life form and enslaving it. There is great anger in this nation over health care. There are senators and other Congress people who get threats daily because somebody is upset with the signing and the approval of this health care bill. But yet and still, we or those who live in the United States can spend billions, not M, millions, starting with an M, B, billions, billions of dollars on health care and the care for dogs and cats and other animals. You can afford to take care of a dog and give them sufficient health care, but we got a problem with finding money for the health care of human beings. You got these people, brothers and sisters, going up and down these streets. 
they taking these dogs to the vet and buying this high price dog food. But yet and still, if you go to their house and open their refrigerator, they don't hardly have no food. They begging to put gas in their car. They can barely pay their bills. But yet and still, they can support a dog. Why are you dog crazy? You're dog crazy because you've been conditioned in this nation to be a, a enslaver. You was once a victim and then we turn right around and do the same thing. And then another problem comes about with having these dogs and cats. Overpopulation. So then we begin to sterilize them. Deny them the right to reproduce. And then when they do, we kill them. We put them in these shelters and then when somebody can't adopt these dogs and cats, then we kill them. Look how we treat animals. We take these animals, destroy their environment, destroy their place where they can live in freedom and peace, in accord with their nature, and put them in zoos, and say that we're trying to save the animal. If you wanted to save the animal, you would never have destroyed his environment to begin with. Now we're saving the animal. Hypocrites. And black people in America, we become like the oppressor. Can you imagine that from the day that you was born, by the time you was a certain age, you will become food for somebody. We raise animals just for food. And then we don't give in this society, we don't give the life that sacrifices itself so that we can live any respect. We have these cages and this manufacturing of animals to kill them daily. No type of respect. No time, type of regard. It's like a machine. We lost all our compassion and conscience because we have learned the ways of the slave master. Because the slave master did not care nothing about black people. He didn't care nothing about putting a chain on you. He didn't care nothing about beating you. Some of us suffer low self-esteem. We want to be able to control something, so we buy a cat. Children don't know no better. But as an adult, how can you have a conscience? How can you feel putting chains or leash? Locking your animal in your house while you go to work. But this life has to suffer. Holding it is inside. It can't urinate. It can't defecate. If it do, you'll beat it. Living in your house. Then you got an animal living in the house. Some of y'all won't even let your mama live in your house. Some of y'all won't let your father or brothers and sisters. But you'll bring in a dog. And the dog shed hair all over the place. And dander. It's a filthy beast and spit. And you got that around your children. We've taken on the conditioning and the mind of the oppressor and the slave master. But then you turn around and talk about the white man this and the white man that. But there are certain things that the white man do or the European has done that you embrace. Are you really part of black liberation? Are you really part of Awakening to your own black mind or, or, or you a fake. You and many of us are nothing but dark versions of white people. But you think just because you said, hotel, Yahweh been Yahweh, I saw my them. You think that you have come out of the white mind. We have been conditioned for over 300 years, and this is the only life we know. I would like for some feedback on this issue. I, to my knowledge, don't know nothing about or have no knowledge that Africans, they might have had dogs around, but they did not have dogs as pets. They had dogs or other animals around to help them to survive where they were at. Africans, Asians, and people like that did not have zoos. 
And then when you raise animals for food, you've got to have a certain kind of respect for this animal sacrificing his life so that we can live. You see that in other cultures. Even in Jewish culture, in the process of, of culturing, there is a ritual so that you thank God and you give a certain praise to this animal for sacrificing his life so that we can live. The slaughterhouse is just for money. It don't give a damn. Slavery was just for money. They did not give a damn about your and my ancestors' well-being. So you can be angry at me all that you want to. Because when it's all said and done, the bottom line is a pet owner has become a slave owner. You've taken another life that you feel that is inferior to you and made a slave out of it for your own personal grandiose enjoyment. That dog can't go get a drink of water when he want to. He can't walk around when he want to. These animals are all locked up. And y'all think something great and good about that? And then you got the nerve to complain about what's happened in slavery? You got some nerve. We got some nerve to be like that. Black people in America should really know better. But we are just like our oppressors, aren't we? Jot down your comments. Ain't too many people going to argue because y'all know I'm right on this one. Ain't no doubt. We should not continue this practice. Thank you for listening. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. One, two, three. Peace, love, and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And once again, welcome to another controversial edition of the Realities Temple, Realities Temple on Earth. And of course, I'm your host. That troublemaker, <laughs> oh, the very opinionated Talik Ibn <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let me. Okay, let me get my prop. Let me get my prop. Here you. Here we go. There you go. Put this around your neck. There you go. Here, right here. There you go. Put that around your neck. You see what that is? Dog leash. There you go. Put it around your. You don't want to put that around your neck. Why not? It's good enough for your dog. Here you go. Oh, but you don't want to put that around your neck. Wonder why. Oh, okay. You don't want to put that around your neck. You know something? Not only do you not want to put that around your neck, there was a hotel, actually not a hotel, but there's a jail. They always got empty space. So if they invite people, instead of going to a hotel somewhere, you know, it's cheaper. Why don't you come in and then uh, get locked up voluntarily for a while, you know? You don't like that either. You don't like those thoughts. Now, if you don't like those thoughts, you don't want to do that for yourself, but you can take an animal, and it's all right for him to put a chain, chuck a collar around his neck, and walk him in the neighborhood. He want to go to the left. You grab him and set him back. Go to the right. You go and do it. I say. That's some kind of domination. Some kind of. Y'all like that, don't you? Here, here you go. Put your head down here. Here, here we go. I want to pet you. I want... Oh, you don't want me to pet you on your head? That's good enough for your dog. And cats and pet them and rub this. Look. Y'all like me to rip the tummy with you. You probably feel like that part. Oh, but you don't want to do that either? Oh, but it's good enough for the dogs and the cats? See, the point here I'm making is that we have become so high and mighty as human beings. You think that you're supposed to run Everything. Everything's supposed to fall under your feet. I understand where you get that concept. So this is how y'all play it. 
since this God person created you, and you're supposed to bow down and worship and be his pet. So any life that's lower than you, then you want to make pets out of them like God made pets out of you. All right, I did it. Now I understand. And y'all bullies, because you know damn well if those animals could break free from you, you know they would not stand having no sugar collar on them. You putting some dried up food that's not even natural to them. Dogs and cats are meat eaters. You pouring some kind of ground up cornmeal in a bowl. They don't want that's not natural for them. But that's all right. But you you don't want it. The concept of pet now. This is what I want to say real quick before uh, time runs out. I lost my my uh, my uh, train of thought just that quick on the on the point that I wanted to make. Oh yeah, but I'm nice to my pet. I treat my pet. Don't you know? I was locked up, incarcerated. And a lot of people get locked up. You sometimes, in a lot of cases, they treat them nice and get three meals a day. That's nothing like your freedom. How many dogs and cats and birds and things, pets, get burned up in fire because they depend on you and you're not there? They got paws and fins and trapped in a bowl or on a leash or trapped in a house they can't get out. And they burn up in fire. And now that there's a recession, y'all lovers of animals care about them so much. As soon as you have financial trouble, now you're kicking the dogs and the cats out of your house because you can't afford them no more. And in the neighborhoods where you stay at, you know if you interrelated with that dog and that dog that's a stray now that you kicked out the house, he ended up fighting somebody that's going to fall on you. Now, there's a lot of stray animals out in the country. It's, it's more difficult for them to find the owner of that dog. Now you've got gangs of stray dogs all over the country. And then these stray dogs get together, and then they mate and they start having fun. Then there's another thing talking about dogs and cat mating. This is something they don't tell you. Always talk about get your cats and dogs spayed and neutered. But to a male dog, when he gets... Uh, Neuter, is that the correct for dogs? When he gets neutered, it takes away his maleness. And he becomes, he stays a puppy the rest of his life. He'll never grow up from taking his testicles taken away from him. They don't talk about that. Y'all pet owners are the cause of all this. Animal abuse. And these people... Uh, breeding all these animals in all these horrid conditions so they can feed these people that want to enslave other life. You should be saying. Then you turn around and talk about slavery is bad or slavery was a bad thing and you do the same thing to lower creatures. So how can you get the nerve to come out of your mouth that slavery is bad? You don't want no leash on your throat. You don't want to be walked down the street with a leash. You don't want to be confined in a space. But it's all right for the dog and it's all right for the cat because that's my pet. I treat them nice. How are you treating them nice when you deny that another life form gets freedom so you can tear it on their head? Here, let me pet you in your damn head. It's good enough for the animal. Then we take them and then here we go. And we go to the zoo and we watch the giraffe that should be free in Africa going on about its business. We happy that a baby giraffe or a baby panda is born in a chair or zoo. You glad that that baby is born in incarceration imprisonment. Y'all have become sick in the mind. What's wrong with you? You think that is all right. And you'll sit around all day long and try to justify your action. 
But if you was born in prison, your mama, how would you feel? Instead of a hospital bed, you was born in a bed inside of a prison. You wouldn't like it, but it's all right for the cat. It's all right for the dog and the rhinoceros and the lion. It's all right for them to be born into incarceration. But we treat them nice. Abuse don't necessarily mean a slap and a kick and bad food. Abuse can also be nice. Y'all don't want to hear that. I know you don't. Because you like bullying other life, making them your pet. Submit to me like other folks, your boss and your mama and the president and these other stupid leaders. You have to buy it out of them, so now you got somebody who you can kick in the ass and be nice. The leaders of this country kick you in your ass every day, but they're nice. Were they nice, pretty ties and all that? This is your brother, speaking up for defenseless animals today, and will always. This was and is the reality temple on earth. Think about it. Jot your angry comments down because I know that you got them. You hear it. And here, take this with you. Take that, take that with you. This is the reality of Temple on Earth. Peace, forever and always. This is your brother, Talit Ibn Ra, and of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. I want to say to you that something in my past continues to bother me to this day. Something I did out of ignorance, but yet and still, it was done. And I explain that to you in these quick few minutes that we have together. And perhaps you went through the same thing in, 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 in a different manner or a different situation. I was very young. I don't, I don't know exactly how old I was. Perhaps eight or nine years old, I'm trying to guess, ten at the max perhaps. And my mother bought me a BB gun for the first time. And it would be my last time. And I wanted this BB gun because as a young boy growing up, your friends was getting BB guns. Um, they had very powerful guns, the pump type that you pump and you shoot things. My mother bought me one of the cheapest guns. You didn't pump it up, you just uh, cranked it up one time and it, it was a very weak gun, but it did the job. So I was very happy when I received this gun and I went out happily to commit my first murder. I didn't notice what it was but in reality, that's what it was. I saw a robin, and the robin was just jumping in the grass. You know how robins do. Robins are those birds that really aren't afraid of human beings, and they allow you to approach them real close, and they don't fly off, and they don't get scared. And this particular robin sat in the grass. Well, actually, he wasn't in the grass. I I think he was perched in a tree on one of the limbs. I took aim through the uh, sight of the gun, and I shot and fired. My gun was very weak. I saw the little 
tell it, the bullet, the BB, flopped through the air. It went up and it dropped and it hit the robin in the chest. And when that BB hit the robin in the chest, I saw the feathers fly and I saw the blood splatter. And I watched the robin's eyes as they closed and it looked like, looked like the bird of Christian pain and he let go of the breath and he fell to the ground. I was so happy and excited because that was my first killing. Like I said, I was a child. I really didn't understand the magnitude of what I was doing. I was doing just what we were taught, hunting and killing things for pleasure. I got the robin, I put the robin in my hands and I looked at it. And tears started coming out of my eyes because I really didn't realize what I had done. I had taken a life. Even though it was a robin, I had taken a life. And don't you know, as old as I am today, sometimes I wake up and sweat with a tear running out of my eye from that murder that I committed out of ignorance. So, here we are, a whole group of people that go out. They don't need any food. They don't need anything at home. Their cabin is a fool. But they put on these orange clothes and caps and they go out in the forest and they sit behind trees waiting for a deer or a possum or a squirrel, anything, as long as they can kill. But unlike me, who have never touched a gun of any type ever since I murdered that robber, they happily sit there and they shoot a deer in the chest or in the side and they watch the blood splatter and the fur fly from the animal. They watch the animal as it falls and it drops to the ground and they laugh. Look, Charlie, look what I got. Look, Charlie, look what I got. And they're happy at killing something that they didn't have to destroy. All over this nation. And then another thing that a lesson that I learned while being incarcerated is this thing about our pets. Who are we to have the right to take another life and bound it and put leashes on it and walk it around and make it jump and do something that's unnatural? Take it out of his own environment. Just recently, a pack of dogs killed a, uh, some elderly people. You probably heard that on the news. And then they turned right around and killed the dogs for killing these elderly people. They were hunting, doing what they naturally do. No more, no less. The reason why these feral dogs done what they done, they used to be pets and they went wild. You and people, human beings, put them in that situation. Then you turn around and kill them when they hunt, but there's no consequence for you to go out and murder innocent animals. You don't need no deer meat. You don't need no possum meat. You're full. Matter of fact, some of y'all are overweight and obese, but you want to go out in the forest. Then you want to also get upset with the serial killer who don't kill deer, who don't kill possum or track down dogs. They kill human beings. But then you got a problem with somebody who wants to hunt down and murder human beings. You better get your mind straight. What do you really want? Since you like to hunt, how come it's not good to hunt human beings and kill and murder them, but you feel as though it's all right in society to murder innocent creatures? So now you have overfishing, overpack population. Due to human arrogance and selfishness and ignorance, I never, in that manner, murder, because that's what you are, murder an animal like that. And you should even, if you got any kind of conscience. This is your brother, Charlie Keeping Run. Jot down your comments. 
this was and is the reality is temple on earth. And rest in peace to the little Robin that I murdered in ignorance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But never, never again. Y'all have a nice day evening. Peace.